which of the following systems is causal? So to test for causality, we want to see, does the output ever anticipate a future input? So it's important for a system to be causal that this value here is less than or equal to t. So we ask the question, is t minus 3 always less than or equal to t? And the answer is yes, always. So therefore, the first system is causal. The second system, we're not interested in this n here. We're only interested in the input and whether or not the output is anticipating the input. So we ask ourselves, is n always less than or equal to n? And the answer is yes. So it is a causal system. Similarly, for the next question, we're not interested in this n, we're not interested in the power. We're interested in this, the argument for x. And this has to be less than or equal to that. And if that holds for all values of n, then the system is causal. Same again. We look at this n and this n, and they both have to be less than or equal to n. So is n less than or equal to n? And n minus 2 less than or equal to n? And the answer is yes. So it's a causal system. For the next one, we're interested in this, the argument for x. We're not interested in the 1. We're not interested in the point 2. We're not interested in the cosine. We're interested in the input. And the input is x. So we ask ourselves, is t always less than or equal to t? And the answer is yes. And it's a causal system. Same again. We're interested in what's going on between the brackets here. We're not interested in what's multiplied by the signal. We're interested in whether or not we're anticipating a future value. And t minus 1 is always less than t. So this 2 is a causal system. And our last system here, we have these two, and they both need to be less than t. So we ask ourselves, is 2 minus t less than or equal t? And is t minus 1 less than or equal t? Well, t minus 1 is obviously less than t. But is 2 minus t less than or equal t? Well, if t was positive, then 2 minus t might be less than t. But for negative values of t, it wouldn't be. And we can actually um, solve it more formally by saying, is there a value for t for which 2 minus t would be greater than t? So if we can find a solution to this, then this would be non-causal. OK, so 2 greater than 2t, and therefore t less than 1. So any value of t less than 1 would make this greater than t, and therefore it would be causal. So for example, if t was equal to 0, here you'd have 2 minus 0, which is 2. Here you'd have 2, uh, sorry, 0 minus 1, which is minus 1. And here you would have y, oops, y of 0. A little bit of pen problem here. So 0 
is greater than minus 1, but it's less than 2. So 2 is what we would call a future value. when compared to zero. So this would be non-causal. As long as we can find a value for t for which um, one of these uh, two conditions doesn't hold, then we describe the system as non-causal.